Hi, Sarah. Thanks so much for talking with me today on EWA's Ed Media Commons. You know, the push is really on to turn around the nation's chronically low-performing schools. And in part, that's because of a big infusion of money from the federal government through the School Improvement Grant Program called SIG. You're just wrapping up a study of uh, some districts in a, a state that you are protecting their privacy, but um, I'm hoping you can share some of your key findings from this study. They, they were pretty discouraging, weren't they? Um, yeah, I think I think they were. We we um, were enthusiastic about the, the rhetoric around the implementation of these grants and the push for dramatic change, and we had hoped to to see some of that in the schools and in the districts we visited. And I think really what characterizes our findings was it's hard to determine whether it was an, an inability or an unwillingness really to push for that dramatic change that the Secretary Duncan referred to when he announced the grant. So uh, there were some opportunities laid out with the grant that, that weren't taken advantage of to the extent that we hoped that we would see. And I think a big one was in the area of human resources. So you had um, districts that were um, doing things like shuffling principals from one chronically performing school to another. You had the same thing happen with teachers. Now, granted, we understand that in rural areas the uh, labor pool is small and that adds a challenge, but we also saw this in large urban districts. Um, so we also saw some turnaround efforts that were were classic in the t in in the turnaround literature that we had read prior to starting the study. So pretty common was a kitchen sink approach, and I think one thing that we learned that is that there was no lack of effort or um, intent or will or hard work. It was it was really a lot of people working as hard as they possibly could, and one common um, I think mistake as it's been described by some other resources, is to throw everything at the problem. So we went into a school, for example, that was using um, the STEM, had just instituted a STEM instructional based model. So they, were, they had shifted to a science, technology, and math um, focus. And they had also instituted project-based learning. And they had also instituted block scheduling. And they had also instituted team teaching and extending the school day. So there was all these things piled up one on top of the other, pretty common um, and, and really good intentions and efforts, but hard to do those things. And really the end result was kids and teachers overwhelmed and no, no big gains in terms of academic achievement. Well, that, so I, I think also we saw that it's... Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say that the U.S. Department of Education recently announced the creation of a new Office of School Turnaround. And I think one of the things you found was that districts uh, would do well by following that example. Can you tell us why? Yeah, again, we relied on a lot of the research that had already been done. and. And really, those researchers who visited districts around the country that were having some more success around turning around some trouble, struggling schools are reluctant to call this best practice work, but they are noticing some trends. And one of the trends is that districts are creating a turnaround, a district turnaround office that really concentrates the expertise and uh, for turnaround work. And I think what we found in a lot of the schools and in the districts that we visited that there was um, a lack of expertise, a lack of understanding on, on really how to do the work and the nuts and bolts, so how to change instruction, how to change the culture in a school, how to rely on the data to inform what you're doing in the classroom, how to, how to find people who are skilled, not just skilled teachers and principals, but really skilled specifically in the, the work that is required to actually turn the school around. So um, that's one benefit of that district turnaround office is it can concentrate that expertise, can give the schools and the uh, teachers, the principals, the support that they need to do the work. So Sarah, way. Sarah that is, that's clearly something that journalists covering school turnaround 
efforts can ask about. Do, is there sort of a way to concentrate that expertise? But also, what else should reporters be asking district leaders, school leaders, teachers, parents, students about turnaround efforts? On the ground, if they get into a school that is turning around, what should they be looking for? I think they should talk to teachers. I think they should watch instruction. It's it, you don't have to be an expert to recognize high quality instruction, and you can you'll know it when you see it. I think most education report, reporters are well versed in what good instruction looks like. So you really want to see that happening in a classroom, and you want to talk to teachers and hear um, a level a, a that there's been a change in culture and a a shift to high expectations for students. That's something that we did find in some of the schools you visited, but certainly was not the norm. Um, you want to hear the teachers not not putting students in the center in terms of where the responsibility lies, but really accepting the the huge burden, which is no no doubt massive, on themselves to, to do the work that, that needs to be done in order to get these kids moving academically. So I think the changing culture is a great thing to look for in schools. Um, I think in terms, if you're talking to folks, oh, and I, I would talk to parents, if you if reporters have the opportunity to talk to parents and students, I would ask them from their perspective, is their child more engaged? Does, is, are they learning more? Um, is the student more excited about going to school? Are they, is there something about school that they can communicate that's different from how it's been prior? Right. And then at the district level, I, it would be interesting to... Oh, well... We, I, <laughs> this is a funny, awkward delight. So at the district level, it would, it would be interesting to hear, um, you know, what models were chosen. So there's the four models. What, what models were chosen? Why did the district choose those models? And is it, was there anything that got in the way of them choosing another model if they wanted to? Um, I would love to for reporters to to be questioning districts about human resources policy. There are the principles that they got that lead these six schools. Were they principles that were brought into the district? Are, are they principles with specific expertise in turning around schools? Those are really good signs. And definitely it's happening in, in pockets across the country. Great. Well, we are out of time, but I thank you so much. And I do want to say we do have a link to a presentation that you put together on this study and there's a, it's packed with great information. Thanks for joining me today, Sarah. Yeah, thank you for your interest.